Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask Inky. Today we're taking a look at an amazing new and also very simple knobs modeling tool. This is known as Plasticity. Plasticity is made available by an amazing developer known as Nick and he's constantly developing this beautiful tool that you might want to consider looking at. It makes sense to know that knobs, unlike what you get with primitive modeling tools like Maya, Blender, 3D Studio Max, is a bit different in terms of use. So, knobs in its sense is a non-uniform rational basic spline, which is a mathematical model that simply uses splines, in most cases B splines, to create the surface area of an object. And that is why you get to see more and more product designers rely on knob-based tools as it's more flexible to actually interact with, contrary to what you have with box modeling. So, it is pretty impressive to see that we have one free one that you can actually lay your hands now and grab, as this is pretty impressive and it will give you a head start if you've been thinking about getting into product design. Now with that said, let's dive directly into plasticity and take a look at what this tool actually does. So with plasticity open right here, you would notice that this tool looks extremely simple, looks very basic like you would get with any other 3D modeling tool of the day. And it is just quite impressive what you can do with it. First off, you have this gigantic viewport which you can navigate by using the middle mouse button to roll in and roll out for zooming. And if you press down on the middle mouse button, you can obit. And of course, the right mouse button, if you click and drag, you can pan. That is very basic for navigating. Your tools exist right here. Switching perspective exists right here. You see your view cube here. So just in case, you know, you like to switch from one point to another, your view cube is here. And of course, you'll find a couple of panels within the right side of the viewport. And these include the undo history, the snapping, the constraint planes, clipboard, and also the performance statistics. Right over here, within the right hand side, is a plane that deals with solid and also curve. And for those who've been thinking about about component selection type, you can find all of that baby right over there. And switching this is very simple. You want control points, press one on the keyboard and you have your control points selected. You want to see the edges, press two. You want to see the faces, press three and the full object, press four. So very simple and easy to use. Now the question is, how do you even get started making stuff with it? And how you can get started making stuff with this is super, super easy. So. Let me explain. If you click right here, you have a self, a simple line. And how you work with that line is click on one point, go over to another, another right here. And finally, you can close it. And once you have an enclosure like this, you would notice three things happen. First off, we have an enclosure that you can see, which is obvious. And you would see right here that we have a viewport display of shortcut keys that we can use. And this is one of those nice things that you would definitely want to see in any new software that is coming out of date which would actually guide a beginner user to know what to do at a given time. Next thing which you'd notice is we have a couple of tool panels that exist right here, which is just very beautiful. So explaining this is just pretty simple as this is the move, rotate and scale, very basic stuff. You could also see that it's very Blender-like, which is G for move. You have the R for rotate and S for scale. Now, before we talk about how you can work with this tool, I would like you guys to also notice then right now we have a curve. So because we just created a line, you would see that we have that curve right there. So if I also go over and select the simple curve tool and click, click and drag right there, click one more, click and drag and right click to let go, you would notice that we have two curves. So your curves exist there while the solid objects that you create, they exist right here. So how do you create solid objects? How you can create solid objects is super easy. For those who've worked with the online tool known as Vectory, or maybe you've worked with SolidWorks, this is going to be like a no brainer for you because it's basically the very same thing that you've always loved to work with. So how you can create the solid is pretty easy. So all you need to do is select the curve, select the extrude tool or tap E on the keyboard, just like you would do in Blender. And you'd notice you have three different ways of extruding. And this applies to all the other tools, okay? So the first one, which you'd notice, is you have a widget right here, you have your on-screen display, and you have your operator. So it's totally up to you what you like to do. In this case, I'm just gonna click, drag, and that way we have extruded the object and you can see it counts right there. And if we like to add some thickness, probably we wanna add some wall thickness, you can choose to do this by simply using this right here, or you can press T on the keyboard and drag your mouse and you can see how cool this is. And once you're ready, click to let go and click on OK to initialize that. And you would notice that we would have a solid right there. So let's go ahead and do that. And you see that bad boy. So one question you guys would have is what about the curve? So the thing here is you can use this curve to create 
as many things as possible. Now, if you remember, when we created the curve, we had this key called fillet. So if we press D on the keyboard, we can fillet this curve how we want. And at the same time, you would notice that you have the fillet controls, which you can use to cut this all the way back. Now, if you'd like to create a new shape out of this, you can. So we can go ahead, click on the extrude key, create that object that we love. And once you're ready, click on OK, select the curve as well. And we can type G on the keyboard to move it to wherever we want. And what if you like to also fillet some other part and create something else? Totally fine. Click on OK, select the curve tool, click and fillet just the part that you want. So in this case, let's say we want to fillet something like that. Select this to grab that shape, click, drag all the way up and you have it. This is just like the very basic stuff. You want to create pipe? Simple. Select the object, click on this button. You have yourself some pipe. You want to play with the pipe? Go ahead, play with the pipe, click on OK, and you have a base pipe for your object. And I know right now, lots of you guys have already gotten the hang of how you can create solid objects, and you're wondering what about beveling and also doing some booleans, and that is also super simple. Select the object that you want, tap 2 on the keyboard to switch over to edge. Remember, we talked about that earlier, and I can select whatever edge that I want. So I can go ahead, select the edges that I want right there. And let's go in and I can click right over there and do that fillet thing. Now, if you're coming from a very basic 3D primitive tool, you will consider this as beveling, but right here it is known as fillet. So you can fillet this to get the smooth one, or you can fillet this negatively to get the very sharp fillet. So totally dependent on what you want, you can get this going. And once you're ready, click on OK to let go. Now let's talk about the Boolean. What about Boolean? You know, you want to Boolean things. Now, regardless of the fact that you have a curve, you also have some other objects that you can use to create some amazing shapes. So we can go through and create this right there and click to let go and let's create a shape out of it. Nice. So with this shape, let's actually create something even more interesting out of it. Looking pretty good. Click on OK. Select the object by tapping 4 on the keyboard so you can select just the solid and I'm just going to move the solid right into place. So once I move the solid over to the point where I want it to be, click on OK and let go. Then I'll select the first object and also the second one. Now, once I have these two selected, I can now go ahead and create a Boolean. Now, once you click on the Boolean tool, you would notice that you have a couple of other keys that appear. So if you like to union, you can tap Q on the keyboard to have a union. If you like to have a difference, you can tap W and also intersection deals with the E key. So depending on what you like to get, you can toggle through these and you can see how quick this actually works. So let's get that difference right there and proceed to click on OK. And once we do that, you can see we have that there. You can also go over, tap two on the keyboard, select a couple of points. So let's say we like to bevel these edges, you know, just get the most out of them. And there you go. OK, so that is that easy. Moving on, for those who like to create arrays, let's say you want to make some beautiful arrays. Let's go ahead and explore that. Uh, what I'll do is grab onto this object, press one on the keyboard, switch over to the control point, and I'm just going to create something like so. And uh, let's also fillet this entire thing. So I'm just going to fillet these parts about that much. Okay, not bad. All right. So the reason why we're doing this is just to get some very custom shape so we can see how this works and that looks cool. And I can also go in and make something like that. Awesome. So now that we have this, what if you like to create an array? So there is a radial array tool that actually exists with this. So with any tool selected, you can go in and click on the radial array tool. Now with the radial array tool selected, you need to define where the center of the rotation would happen. So if you go in and click on this button, you notice that you have the radial array happening within this point. So if you hold down control on the keyboard, you can increase or decrease by rolling the middle mouse button up and down. And this is quite fun. So for those who like to create some nice stuff like this, I mean, this is going to be very useful. Another thing that I think lots of guys might want to also know is what about if you have a couple of curves and you like to breach these curves? How you can do that is also very, very simple. So let's say we go in here and I create a simple curve like so. So let's just go in and create a curve like this and uh, click and also click right there, right click to let go. And for some reason, we choose to do something else. So click right there, uh, switch these over to that point and uh, let's get this there. So I'm just gonna click to let go 
and click right over there and right click awesome so let's say we have this going it doesn't look like much but probably that works so we can have the first one selected let's go in and select just the first one and i'll proceed to rotate that first one all the way to a point like that and hijack this all the way up so let's move that upwards drag this over to this point and you can see what we have awesome so now that you have this curve selected if you would like to connect these two together or bridge them you can so to bridge them you need to select the bridge two curves and select the first part go over to the second one and click make sure you have these two all right make sure you're selecting the edges and that way you can bridge the first one and if you're okay with it click on okay if you just want the bridge you can set it as a bridge and you can see what you get there but if you like to have a simple spline you can get that right there and once you're ready you can click on okay to get that in and the same thing happens with the other part so if we go over and take a look at let's see what we have over there so if we go over and take a look at the other part we can select the bridge tool click on the first part click on the second one and you can also see what we have now if we'd like to just get that as a bridge we can do that leave the values the way they are and click on ok so at this point you now have some sort of connection going with these objects and with all of them selected you can go over here and click on the join tool which automatically joins the entire tool so you can now see that we have it as one curve so in this case you now have this one gigantic curve that you can now use to start creating stuff and this is quite impressive the amount of things that you can do with a simple tool like this that looks pretty awesome and for exporting once you're done creating your amazing piece of art you can simply select any of the objects that you've just made so in this case let's say we'll select an object like that or we'd just like to select and export every single thing let's go in and select all of them once we're done selecting we can proceed to export all of this object as both c3d step files igs sat and also obj so depending on the file type that you like to work with you can proceed to export this and start working with it in your dcc app of choice and in conclusion i would say this tool has a lot of potential it is a beautiful tool for anyone who would like to you know lay their hands and guess that we're working with knobs at the same time it is a bit buggy since this tool has an active development going on currently there is a whole lot of things that you need to actually take with a grain of salt so more likely than none this is more of a modeling tool and it is nowhere compared to what you get with the big players like solidbox and all that but it is a tool with a lot of potential and i'll consider this as the very very baby blender of the knob based modeling tools so if you would like to take a look at this, links to this is going to be in the description, so do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. Lots of potential for this tool is still within its very, very early beta. And of course, a lot of practice, a lot of tests, and also a lot of development will get it to where it needs to be. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.